Welcome everyone to the Proven Knowledge Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Church. I'm a music producer from Northeast Ohio. I began this weekly interview series to give you different perspectives on how to approach a career in the field from different artists, producers, engineers, and other great minds who share their stories on not only what's made them succeed, but also what has shaped them into the people that they are today. I hope you gain some real proven knowledge from the show and that it helps elevate you and your endeavors on your own journey towards success as well. Let's get into it. Welcome everyone to episode 158 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series, and today I had a guest. She's an artist, originally from the North Carolina area, currently residing in Nashville, Tennessee. Her name is Ashley Faith. Uh, you might have guessed by the last name of her artist name, Faith, that she is a Christian-based artist. Uh, she primarily talked about the importance of God you know, in her life in general and how she met that hand-in-hand hand with music and has been sharing her message um, to listeners. She talked about you know, before being in a group um, and kind of doing things that way before breaking off on her own to be a solo artist, really being at it now, um, originally since 2009, but more recently since 2017 doing the solo thing. Talked about her new EP uh, called AOM. And I could definitely tell that she had a lot of passion speaking about how the different songs you know, came to be for that songwriting process, the real messaging behind it all. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what she has to come next. We also talked about you know, avoiding burnout as an artist, as a creative, uh, finding that balance. She works as a real estate agent um, and also is an artist and does all kinds of other things too. So for her, you know, keeping schedules, uh, allowing herself free time, very important things. And I thought that was a great, um, you know, discussion that we had in this episode. And overall, I'm just happy that I was able to connect with Ashley this week and have this incredible discussion for all you guys to hear. So without further ado, let's get into this one. Welcome everyone to episode number 158 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creators Series. Today I have a great artist. Uh, she's currently in the Nashville area, originally from North Carolina. Uh, Ashley Faith is here. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, guys? Thank definitely you for having me. Yeah, no, no problem. And I'm definitely excited. I know we've talked about it for I think like a month or so now, yeah. um, and so. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a yeah, I'm definitely definitely excited to have you on here. And, and to start off every episode, we have the guests give some background. You know, how long have you been doing music? How did you get into it? Some basic information for those that might not know you and what you do. Gotcha. Yeah, so my name is Ashley Jackson. Um, artist name is Ashley Faith. Um, yeah, originally from Greenville, North Carolina. Um, live in Nashville, Tennessee now. Um, 29. And I'm, I'm basically a Christian um, rap artist. Um, so I love God and music. Mm. Um, and yeah, I just make music for, uh, Christians or new believers or people that want to convert, um, and try to, um, uh, keep God in, in my concepts and, mm-hmm. but also, you know, g- g- new, new generation music yeah. for, <laughs> yeah. um, but I started in 2009 making other types of music, um, until I got closer to God in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when I took it more seriously. So, yeah. Yeah. I read that you, I think you moved in what, you said 09, so you've been in, or, or you've been in Tennessee for a while now, so what kind of led to that decision to make that change? Well, gotcha, well actually I started music, sorry, in, in 2009, but I moved to Nashville like last year. Oh, okay, so, so this is new. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we came here um, for other reasons, like it is the music capital, one of the yeah. music capitals. Um, but it was kind of just a coincidence because we came here to like start up um, like real estate investment, mm-hmm. um, do- doing that mostly. Um, we found like a place here that we like to invest in. Uh, so we moved here just to kind of keep an eye on that. But then I thought about it. I was like, wait, this is the um, uh, music capital. Yeah. Like I could grow a lot here. So it's, I think it's just God kind of put me here um, and to maybe to network with other artists. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Uh, well, I'm excited to be here. I really, it's really fun. I like it. Um, it's not. It's, people think it's just country music, but <laughs> yeah. it's starting to be more of a mixture of like um, of jazz and different types of music, alternative. Mm-hmm. I would say too. Yeah, and that's definitely that's awesome because it sounds like for you, that's two different opportunities that are super important for you, and they're kind of getting <laughs> taken care of at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's definitely crazy. awesome. 
And so <laughs> as far as, you know, you said you are a Christian artist and faith is very important to you. How do you think you made that decision to combine your faith with doing music and have that approach to it? Like, how did you come yeah. upon that? Yeah, so when I started, I love I love music in general. Um, and I was a big fan of Michael Jackson um, and still was a big fan. But uh, the reason I kind of started making music was just uh, being inspired by him. And I couldn't sing, so I was like, I want to do music some way. So I started rapping um, back in 2009, 2008. Um, so I formed a group back then of a bunch of friends in high school, um, uh, to make music and we were just we were um christian back then um uh but it was a it was just you know kind of just existing um going to church christianity um mm-hmm. and so i would make music and it would just be a mixture of god but a mixture of a lot of different things um and it wasn't until 2011 that i got i went to college and like had this like spiritual experience with god and really got closer to him um, and really changed my life um, is when I really started making that, like uh, explicit, I would say, Christian music. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I decided, you know, I couldn't just say anything on my songs anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to, you know, help the body of Christ, uh, uh, encourage people, comfort people, and, and put something out that was um, edifying um, and not harmful. Yeah. Uh, and And so that's really how I started making music for God. And then um, 2015, I think it was, is when I joined another group, um, full of Christian, full of Christian believers. And, um, we kind of joined to, uh, make songs. It was like a group full of artists, like, uh, singers, rappers, uh, producers. Um, and we just came together and, uh, kind of grew together and, and made more Christian music. Um, but today I'm just a, a solo independent, uh, Christian artist, mm-hmm. but uh, it was definitely, um, wanting to, uh, put my faith into out in the world and yeah. help believers yeah, yeah. grow. And, be- and it's so I mean, awesome to kind of combine the two, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like when you have a skill like music and you can use it to get that message through to people in a different way. Yeah. And I think that definitely makes what you do unique as well. And uh, I definitely commend you for, you know, doing that and putting something that's very important to you and in your life into music and out there for people. So I definitely think yeah. it's awesome. And it's great to see, you know, how it's evolved too. Like you said, from being in the groups and things like that to now still doing it on your own and everything. And obviously, I know you just dropped an EP um, recently. Uh, AOM is the name of the EP. So is that an acronym? I'm kind of curious. Did yeah. it, I assume I assume it's an acronym, but I don't know. So tell us about the EP and the story behind it and kind of what went into making this one. Gotcha. Yeah, the EP, um, I just released it. Well, it came out. Um, in January 20th. Um, so the, the name is AOM. It stands for All of Me. Um, so basically it's just about um, encouraging and, wa- and wanting to <clears throat> provide music for those that want to give their all to God. Um, we kind of get stuck in like um, maybe just as Christians going to church or, or playing church or um, not really experiencing God really like kind of calling ourselves Christian like I, like I did in 2009. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to kind of make a, um, uh, yeah, a whole, a whole project around like becoming more serious with God and, and about God and mm-hmm. experiencing for real. Um, cause I really think that's what our generation is seeking nowadays. It's like, you know, we, we don't really like the traditions we we're I think we're leaving church. They say, um, yeah, it's, it, I think people are really looking for like the real God, the real spiritual experiences, the real help people realize that you don't have to play church you don't have to mm-hmm. be a christian and just um you know you, there's actual real benefits and a real a real relationship you can have with god um and so every song kind of goes into to that um that summary um i think it's there's there's two songs called aom um because i had two versions of the song and i didn't know which to pick so i just kind of put them both up there um and they they basically talk about um, what, I, what I was just explaining and then a song called That's Amazing that talks about God's amazing grace, kind of an old to amazing grace, mm-hmm. um, which is one of my favorite songs. Um, and then there's a, a student of God song, which is um, a song that I wrote in 2017. Um, that song, uh, it really, I really felt was from God. He, I wrote everything. I wrote the song. I had the beat um, already and I wrote the song, but I felt he wanted me to... <laughs> 
delete everything I had. Um, <laughs> and so, so I was, I had finished the song and I deleted, but I mean, I finished the song and I felt he wanted me to delete everything. So I was like, okay, maybe he wants me to um, write something else. So I ended up deleting everything I wrote. And then as soon as I did, it's like he, he really took over and just, I was freely writing a whole new verse um, for this song. And the, everything I wrote is kind of, um, it kind of starts from the beginning of the Bible and, and moves towards Revelation. So it really felt spirit led um, writing that one. And it's a song with, with no um, uh, choruses. So it just kind of, it just, I'm just rapping and kind of, uh, explaining the Bible, I think, a little bit in that song. Um, so if people want to go listen to that one. It's kind of, uh, I think, spirit-led and uh, detailed, yeah. biblical song. Um, but so there's that one. And then there's another one that I really also felt was led by him, which was called um, Sanctified. Um, and most, a lot of people, I think, really like that one off the project. Um and I, I felt him picking the uh, beat as well. I think at first I wasn't going to actually do that song, but I kind of felt a uh, nudge to not <laughs> um, give up on that one. And um, it ended up being like <laughs> the main one people talk about. Um, and so, I, and that one's about um, wanting to be wanting to be sanctified, wanting to be um, obedient to the word, obedient to God, and um, living a life for Him. Um, people that desire that. Are, yeah especially our age when you don't think that's possible. Um, just kind of encouraging people that you can, you can do that with the help of the Holy spirit. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically the project. I think it's like five songs. I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so it's just a real quick EP. I wanted to get more music out too. Um, I, I think this is my first EP. Like I've done mixtapes. Um, I think like two mixtapes, um, but this is my first EP and like, uh, my most recent music that I'm really proud of, I would say, um, um, that shows kind of my new sound or yeah. a, more, a more quality body of work, yeah. I would say. Well, I can just tell from the stories alone how special it is to you, you know what I mean? Because I love when artists kind of break down the full like process and kind of get <laughs> into like what inspired them to create certain songs as well. So you can always <clears> tell like when certain moments were very special. I can tell for you just being able to create that and write the songs and uh, lay them down was just such a, such an incredible experience. So it's definitely awesome to hear. And uh, I can definitely tell too, that, you know, I think for you, it's probably been even in songwriting and just your evolution in your whole career so far, it's kind of been like taking those next steps too. you know what I mean? Yeah. And getting to a point now where you feel, you feel really confident about like what you're putting out there for people too. Exactly. So yeah. that's definitely it awesome to hear. Yeah, it took a while um, because I've been you know it, I've been doing it since like 2009, but um, I'm finally getting to a point, <laughs> kind of you know, and then I got uh, more professional in 2015. But starting to get to a point, yeah, where where I'm realizing like quality is very important to you know mm-hmm. um, just um, putting out music in general, or doing anything in general, really. Um, so yeah, definitely trying to uh, be more professional. Yeah. Hey, hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a quick minute out to let you know how you can become a monthly supporter of the show. So if you click on the show description in your podcast platform, you'll see the words support this podcast toward the bottom and you can follow that link to sign up. You have the options of donating a dollar, five dollars or ten dollars a month and that'll be used towards making the show a better experience for you as the listener. Uh, That means new and exciting guests, giveaways and a lot more that we can continue to provide for you. So feel free to click that link and check it out or visit anchor.fm backslash proven knowledge backslash support to contribute today. And for now, let's get back into the episode. Yeah. Definitely great to hear. And outside of music, you know, what do you think, especially recently, have been some activities you've been doing to kind of free your mind, maybe, you know, get in that creative space as well, or just any type of hobbies you like to do uh, outside of the creative space that really feed into while you're doing in music yeah um i'm, I'm really busy nowadays i i also work as a software engineer so um I, it's it's been hard to even like promote my ep but mm-hmm. <laughs> um to kind of have the other things i enjoy um to kind of relax have been i actually enjoy vlogging um so i've been doing that a little bit um i've been trying to i actually have a new one i'm editing where i went on a work trip um that's like been something that just um has been helping my creative side the editing and mm. 
figure out how to film and uh, what shots to take and if you want to do b-roll or not um that has been really just uh, i feel like it's somehow related to music but it's <laughs> i guess it's just the creative creative side um that i've been enjoying and um also i'm a, a gamer too so <laughs> kind of do that to nice. relax nice. yeah um, I know, uh, I know vlogging definitely can be related to the content creation too for, for music and stuff. I actually talked to an artist out of Houston a couple months ago and he would do even like when they're just out on the road or like him and his friends just do vlogs and post them on YouTube. And it's almost like a way to give, obviously it depends on what you're using it for, but if you're using it in music, it's like a good way to give people kind of a more of an inside look at like what goes into things too. And there's even <laughs> like there's even like doing um, like behind the song or behind like whatever, you know, you're creating and things like that. So it's definitely um, I think it's definitely always related, especially in the era we're in now where, where content is just so important. And obviously, yeah. like being on social media and stuff. And I can imagine yeah. having to juggle all that and then keep up with, you know, social media and music. That's got to be difficult yeah. so yeah it's, yeah vlogging has really helped in that sense because you do have to be a content creator nowadays mm-hmm. um, as an as an independent artist um and so I've, I've been actually trying to um put out more like uh you know parts of different songs as tiktoks or mm-hmm. reels um, and um and um yeah and actually and actually behind the scene behind the music i've actually been trying to film some of those recently too um behind the scenes type of thing so yeah, you do have to be <laughs> deal with the camera, I guess, or yeah. with the editing. <laughs> yeah, it, and I think it's just like anything else too. Even when, like, when we start out on music, we got to learn some things. We got to like get good at. It. I, I always felt it was the same way with this stuff. I think mm-hmm. it's like if you just continue on and just start building things up, it gets easier over time. But like you said, it's just hard to find the time some sometimes. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, I'm trying to um, organize more now mm-hmm. and, and make an actual task list. And yeah. Actually, felt to actually schedule breaks as well because you can i think in the beginning when i was uh promoting aom i kind of i think i, I burnt myself out yeah. um and i haven't done anything in a, a while because of that so i think it's, it's good to schedule breaks yeah. actual, actual breaks. that brings that brings up a good question uh you know facing burnout because that's something that creatives especially can do if they're super locked in and they feel like they got to get a lot of things done you could hit the yeah. wall pretty quickly. So for you, how do you think you deal with that? How do you cope with that, those feelings? Yeah, um, yeah. like I said, when I was trying to promote AOM, um, that definitely happened because um, I was just, I was scheduling, you know, I'm working, you know, during the weekend and then I was scheduling um, filming for the weekends. And so I wasn't really resting at all. Um, and I just ended up, ended up not doing anything for a while, just feeling exhausted. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, what really helps, what I feel like is really helping me now is yeah, scheduling the breaks, um, trying to figure out, you know, when do you need to take a break? When do you just need a weekend to relax? Um, especially if you work a, a job, a full-time job too. Um, and also just, uh, yeah, doing things you enjoy um, to kind of ease that. I'm realizing being outside, I actually really enjoy nowadays uh, because I work from home, so I'm inside a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I try to go to the park or something nowadays to, to work and I think just fresh air and sunlight yeah. <laughs> um, really helps the, your mood um, a lot. But I, I would say being organized um, can really help with uh, burnout. So mm-hmm. you, you're not overworking yourself. You have things listed out um, for you to do so they're not all like clouded uh, uh, cluttered in your yeah. mind and you know you're constantly thinking about them yeah. um that's really what i feel like god was actually teaching me um, mm-hmm. recently it's, being organized. it's really yeah. like uh giving yourself permission to you know in a way right. where you have to kind of have that discussion with yourself of you know do i have to get everything done today or can i right. like allocate exactly. time throughout the week and then get these things done one at a time uh exactly. and like yeah. you said you if you do have like a job as well and trying to do all that it gets more hectic but just figuring out how it works for you and obviously life life can change like all the time too so you just got to keep like working at it and get better i i always feel for me it's like a constant learning process every day and just trying to figure out how to set the time aside and get things done but i definitely think that's important and fresh air too so important i feel i feel for me it might be this way for you where you're at uh the winters are brutal so it's like you only get a certain amount of days to be out there you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, but, sometimes I'll work in the car um, <laughs> and mm-hmm. just like sit at the park and work in the car, like put the windows down. Um, 
our our open open windows in the house too has it's been nice but yeah yeah it is when it's when it's cold out yeah have you ever recorded music in the car i've heard of people doing this <laughs> have you done that i actually tried i, I <laughs> wanted to um because it was a, a point where i couldn't record in my house at one point mm-hmm. um and i was going to plan on i actually think i did record one time i can't remember but i did record a video in my car um yeah uh rap in the car yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it's like a mini studio, especially if you have the right type of car, I would say. Because I think certain materials makes the music, makes the sound bounce weirdly. Mm-hmm. I've seen, um, I've already seen videos where they'll have the engineer in the back seat with his desktop or his laptop. And then they'll run the microphone yeah. up to the to the driver's seat and have it hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, like that's, how, however you got to get it done, I guess. But. I guess, yeah. <laughs> serious yeah, serious but, dedication right, right yeah i don't yeah, know how uh the acoustics would work in there but exactly that's what I'm it out. <laughs> yeah i do have that little the little um I forgot what's called that goes over the the mic yeah the um, uh, pop filter the pop uh, filter yeah, that, yeah there's yeah. also something else it's like a uh attachment that actually attaches to the mic so it it makes it feel like it's surrounded by the um i forgot the like styrofoam people use. yeah 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 um, but it, it helps with the quality. So, but uh, I think I do. I just record kind of at the house. Yeah, I th- I think it's easier. I also like space. I don't like to be all like crammed right. into a a vehicle <laughs> yeah. myself. But to each their own, I guess. But definitely interesting stuff. Um, yeah. uh, last few questions I have for you here. Um, these are ones I ask on every episode. The first one is: if you could go back ten years ago. Maybe give yourself a piece of advice, or maybe not change anything at all. What do you think you would do? Wow, ten years ago I was about twenty, um, and I was where was I? Twenty? I guess I was in college. Yeah, <laughs> I would probably uh, give myself advice. I would probably. I'm trying to think. If I want to say this. I was. <laughs> I might quit college, um, just because I don't. I really like my career now and everything uh, Mm. it will and everything, but I think, um, I am more interested and I feel like my, my, um, life is, is, has more purpose doing more things for God and, uh, music in general. So Mm. I, either I would quit college or I would change my degree to go into music, um, music production or not production, but, uh, audio engineering, Mm. um, just to be like more involved in in, in music in general, mm-hmm. um, but um, as far as advice as well, um, if I just continue college, I would I would say to not take um, or not be so worried about the the future. Um, just kind of try to find joy in every day and everything you do, mm-hmm. um, and uh, just kind of live for for the day at the moment. Um, you know, with the you know in Christ. Yeah. Um, but not, not not really worrying about uh, how many things you have to do or or um, what's due next week or uh, just just the general anxiety of life. Just maybe mm. just relax, enjoying your time while you have time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Staying yeah. in the like, present. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, Definitely feel that one. So if we yeah. flip it then and we say ten years from now, where do you think you envision yourself in life, career, all that stuff? Yeah. Um, 10 years from now, I, I would hope to maybe have a family, um, but also, um, way, um, I would say, um, uh, more established as a real estate investor, um, to the point where I have more free time and I can, um, maybe not work the nine to five and I can do, uh, more things of God mm-hmm. and, and, or, and just fo- really focus on music probably. And hopefully maybe touring at some point or doing shows more, um, and really establish online, uh, you know, as a, as a content creator, cause mm-hmm. you're an artist. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I would, that's, I would hope that would that would be my 10 year goal. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely awesome stuff right there. And do you have any final words of wisdom today for the listeners? Yeah, I would say, um, I would say that life is really, um, <laughs> get, um, hopeless, but, doesn't really have too much meaning you kind of you do work in school um and the really important part i would say is your your spirituality your your health your your mental health your spirit man your you know your mindset um 
and to kind of lean into that more than anything else in your life Mm. because you know when you grow older things change all the time at any instance things can change um as regarding family your health um relationships friends it's always you know your your creator god that's that's still with you and still around you and still in your life and still god in you so i would say uh try to lean if you can uh, more into learning about him getting to know him um and 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 finding out who he is for -hmm. yourself um, really yeah (laughs) definitely Well, Ashley, I appreciate it so much again. That's all I have for you today, but I am definitely excited for, you know, what else you got coming out soon and uh, continue the good work. I love what you're doing. I love the things you're putting out there and really the message as well. So keep it up and we'll have to do this again soon. Yes, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks everyone for listening today. That was episode 158. We'll be back this time next week. As always, hit the support button on your podcast streaming platform if you'd like to send any funds. And feel free to leave us that five-star rating if you enjoyed today's episode. So we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone.